Welcome back. All right, I want to talk about the Coyotes. Yep, uh, so a lot of talk about the Coyotes. I wanted to condense it into one video, talk about where we're at, where we've been. Uh, the Arizona Coyotes have gone through a lot of owners, and the Arizona Coyotes have gone through their share of buildings as well over the last 20 plus years, and it feels like things are coming to a head. So either 2024 will be remembered as the year where they got it figured out and they fixed it, or it may very well be remembered as the year that the Coyotes move. Now, um, the intention at this point is to buy state trust land. Now, what's interesting is that there's been some debate about whether they have multiple locations they're looking at or not, uh, depending on who you ask. The team has officially said they're still looking at multiple locations. This is problematic. They've been looking at multiple locations for months. Months and months and months and months. And so the fact that we don't have a secure plan, the fact that uh, Maruello takes over as the owner of this team five years ago, uh, Gary Bettman was very much gushing about Maruello as the new owner and what he might be able to do and the deep pockets he has and all that, and he does, uh, but it just, it has not translated to getting that new arena. And if they do get the state trust land, it goes to auction. So the thing is, of course, if it goes to auction, what if they're not the only ones bidding on it? What if somebody else bids on it? There's a hundred acre plot of land in Northeast Phoenix that they're looking at and they want to bid on. However, uh, Friedman's done some digging, and it doesn't appear there's any kind of auction imminent for that land, and it could be months. It could be months before that auction, and even then, you cannot guarantee you're going to get that land. So they could go to Gary Bettman tomorrow and say, hey, we're going to have an auction for this state trust land, and we're going to get it. Bettman's answer could be, are you sure? And their answer would be reasonably confident, yeah, they cannot guarantee it. They can't 100% guarantee it. The plan always was they're going to buy a piece of land and they're going to develop it themselves. With state trust land as well, they're going to have to worry about zoning, everything else too. Like, it's not simple. So, they have a piece of land they want to buy. They want to make it look the same as the Tempe Entertainment District, which of course was rejected last year by voters in Tempe. They want to stay out of a situation where they're going to have to deal with red tape. This is not that situation. Uh, so interest groups could contest this. So they could come in and say, we're going to have this big arena district that's going to be great. And special interest groups could step in and say, no, you're not. And they could have their reasons why they're not going to. Think about what happened in Tempe and how that all fell apart. You had the, the airport complaining. You had various interest groups complaining as well. They wanted to keep their landfill. As far as I know, Tempe still has its landfill. Uh, and, and so they could end up not in the same situation they were with Tempe, but a similar one and one where they can't guarantee that they're going to get that building. Um, also buying it this way takes a lot of time. And so the problem with this is let's just say they go through and they go through the auction process. It could take a while. There's about 10 weeks of, you know, appraising the land and looking at everything and getting all these reports done. Then you have your auction. And then if they win that auction, we could be looking at an extra year or two years that get added to this project before we actually see a building open. And so now we're getting into maybe 2027, maybe 2028, before we get a new building in Arizona. Now, I don't think the NHL is necessarily going to say no to that, but it does feel like the, the clock is nearing its end point here. The union doesn't like it. I don't think the league necessarily does either, but the league has shown just excruciating uh, an excruciating amount of patience when it comes to Arizona haven't they uh, but it does feel like that's that's coming a bit to a close and I mentioned this in a video too uh, how Bettman's wordage has kind of changed we'll come back to that so extra seasons at the mullet I would think a the NHLPA is going to be quite obvious in in their statements of why they don't think that's a good idea there will be those on the board of governors that say hey wait a minute um, this mullet thing was fine when it was two or three years till we got a new building, but if it's going to be six or seven years, count me out. I don't, I don't want to be losing out on revenues. And then there's the other wrinkle too. I'm going to talk about at the end of this. Now, Meruelo, uh, as of Bettman's reporting at the all-star break within the last couple of weeks has assured him he'll get it done. Uh, but the problem with that is name a business person. That's not going to tell you they're going to get it done. Name, name somebody who's not going to, when you push them on it, say, oh, yeah, sure, yep, uh-huh, sure, yep, check's in the mail. No problem, we got this all figured out. <clears throat> and then when they hang up the phone, they're like, we've got to figure this out because I don't know how much longer I can tell the league this. 
Uh, it, it is clear that the relationship between the Coyotes and the NHL, it's not where it was, say, five years ago when Marijuana buys the team. Uh, the league has taken over the Coyotes before. So one thing that could potentially happen is the NHL says, you know what, it's not working, and, and they'd force a sale or they just take over the team. Uh, 2009, uh, Jerry Moyes uh, puts the team into bankruptcy and the NHL takes over, and they ran the, league, ran the team until 2013. And then the owner that bought it in 2013 is no longer the owner. This team's gone through a lot of owners. And I, I thought about putting all the owners on the board, but it's like, no, nah, leave it. Uh, and at the time Marwello bought it, I said, you know, this this feels like this should be it. Like, he's a billionaire. He's He's got a lot of money. He has some means. If it's going to happen, it has to happen here. And I still believe that. I don't know that the league's going to find a better potential owner in Arizona. Uh, there's some debate about whether or not maybe the Phoenix Suns owner might be interested, but I mean, would, would you be interested in buying the Coyotes if you're the owner of the Suns? I don't know that you necessarily would be. Uh, the Suns make money. As far as I know, the Suns make a ton of money. The Coyotes have not. And while apparently they're making more money at the Mullet than they were at Gila River, it doesn't necessarily mean they've got a big, you know, huge amount of profit and this is a great situation for the league and for the team. It's, it's a temporary, it's a stopgap. They're not meant to stay there, right? Um, so the Arizona government was also asked about this, and the governor's office saying, we're not going to help. Uh, basically, the idea that, because governments have in the past, right? We see in, in Alberta, Calgary needs an arena. The Alberta government steps in, and whether you agree or disagree, the Alberta government helping them get that arena, get what they need, so that Calgary does not have to worry about losing their team, which was a discussion when... It was clear that they were having a hard time finding a new arena, and the Saddle Dome does not work. So Calgary got that all straightened out. Arizona is not going to have that kind of help from the government. At least that's how it sounds right now, that they're not going to help speed through the sale of the land. They're not going to help them get any any of the approvals that they might be looking for. Basically, you're on your own. Which, again, billionaire owners, I don't think there's many of us that feel bad for them that they're on their own trying to figure out how to build this giant arena and entertainment district on this huge plot of land it's it's hard to you know muster up some kind of sympathy here i do have sympathy for coyote fans though and there are coyote, coyote fans i always see this oh there's no real coyote fans this is an organization that is the oldest in the national hockey league that does not have a stanley cup final appearance so including back to the winnipeg jets before there were the coyotes there hasn't been any on ice success so fans are, are being asked to pay and in some cases these ticket prices at mullet are really high uh, they're being asked to pay a premium price for not a premium product for a team that has not made the playoffs since 2020. They made the playoffs in 2020 via the expanded playoffs. They haven't made the playoffs in in you know a, a fashion where they've been top eight in their conference. I think 2012 was the last time that happened. So the idea that there's no fans in Arizona and they're terrible fans, I, I think you have to consider that the on ice product has not been up to par like up to par either. So Batman. Not as vocal in his support of the owners. Uh, very careful in what he says. You have to keep this in mind. Bettman, Bettman cannot devalue an owner publicly. He also can't devalue a franchise publicly. He can't throw his arms in the air and go, I don't know what I'm, I don't know what we're going to do about Arizona. This is just, it, it's taking all the money. It's always in the red. I don't know what we're going to do. We don't have an NHL arena for them. I, I, I don't know. I, the owners, I don't know what they're doing. I mean, they always keep telling me everything's great, but I have no idea. He's not going to do that publicly. He's you're you're just you're going to get the lawyer speak because that's that what's that's what Batman does. But if you read between the lines on this, it's clear he's not as gung ho as he was. You look at interviews five years ago, how we would talk about the new Arizona ownership, and you look at now, and it's gone from yeah, this is going to be great. This is an awesome partnership. This is, these this guy knows how to fix things. He's a great businessman. It's turned into. Well, I've talked to him on the phone, and and he's assured me that uh, he's going to get this done. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing at all. Now, Utah is where this changes. If we did not have very public pressure from Utah saying, ready, we're, we're ready to take on a team. I'll build a new arena. It's not going to be... Now, that's the one thing to keep in mind with Utah. They do not currently have an arena which can see 18,000 hockey fans. But uh, do they have an arena that's bigger than the mullet? Yep. And do they have a situation where they'd probably generate more money for the NHL? Yes. The one key thing here, the difference between the whole move the Coyotes to Quebec, move the Coyotes to Houston, 
is that this really feels like it's a brand new market. So Houston is is a new market as well. It's in Texas. You've got Dallas and Texas. This would be your first team in Utah. This would be a Salt Lake City team in Utah. They can do the rebranding. And you have an owner that's already said he wants into the NHL. He's got the deep pockets and he's willing to build a new arena with his own money. At least that appears to be the case. And so there are a number of ways that this could go. But I, I do feel like we're going to see some movement over the next month. Whether it is the auction goes through, and I don't think the NHL wants that. I mean, really, seriously. Uh, let's just say that tomorrow they're like, all right, we're auctioning on this land. Well, you have 10 weeks until you find out what's going on. Now we're into the NHL playoffs before we get an update on this. Well, the NHL doesn't want a distraction during the playoffs of this thing falling through, right? And the schedule, the schedule gets made well in advance. The NHL doesn't want to be in a situation where they have to revamp the schedule in July or late June, right? They want to know what the schedule for next season is going to be earlier, which does mean there's a deadline on the Coyotes that I thought was the end of January. I really felt like the hard deadline should have been the end of January. We're now into the first week of February. It's the second week of February starting tomorrow. Uh, but it, it does feel like there's deadlines that have passed. And at this point, we don't have any clarity on what they're going to do. Because while the state trust land seems to be where they want to go with this, and that's that's dating back to June of last year, uh, when this, this clearly is where they, they thought this might be the best way for them to go with it, it hasn't moved any further forward. So their options are get this new arena done and get it announced as soon as possible. Uh, maybe we end up with new Arizona owners, which again, doesn't seem, I don't know how it's going to be likely because you're trying to sell a new owner who's going to look, they're going to do their due diligence and go, wow, you guys have had a lot of owners. Uh, can I see the books? And you look at the books and it's going to be just, it's a sea of red. Like it's a red wedding when you're looking at their financials at this point. Uh, and then the other option would be to move. I don't think the, the NHL wants to lose the Arizona market. I think they view that the state of Arizona, you could have uh, a team that generates money and interest and all that, but it has to be run right on and off the ice. The, the sad part is it feels like the Arizona Coyotes on the ice are on the right track. I feel like this Coyotes team... Uh, last season and this season, I can see the growth. I can see how the team's getting better. And I can see them building a pretty good foundation for their future. I just don't know that that future is going to be realized in Arizona. And I think back to the Quebec Nordiques, that they were bad, they were bad. And then when they got good, they moved to Denver and they won a cup. Um, Coyote's a bit of a different situation because in Quebec, you had that fan support. Just the Canadian dollar was dropping off and there was a chance to get some American money. And they did that with Denver. Uh, the Coyotes, in this case, they've been bleeding money for years, and it might be time to put a stop to that. I know there's fans who've wanted this for years, um, and, and I've, I've gone back and forth. When the channel started, I was on the same wavelength of, I don't know why the Coyotes are still in Arizona. I don't know why the NHL hasn't moved them. Uh, but I, I realized, you know, like, okay, and they got the new owners in 2019, and I thought, okay, we'll see how they do. It's been five years, and we are nowhere near seeing any kind of an announcement from the team they're trying like every now and then they'll release this statement of here's an update and the update doesn't really give us new concrete information on what they're doing other than well we've got we've got options we've got you look around we've got options yeah and one of the options is going to be to move and whether it's something the nhl steps in and says enough and they take the team away from the current owners and they hand the team over to utah or the current owners say, we can't do this, and they move on. Whatever ends up happening, it feels like it's going to happen soon. I really think this is the year where we're either going to see that that arena deal come through or the team moves. I think you have to do one or the other. I don't think this is workable. And, and I don't think the NHLPA statement has a lot to do with it. I think that we knew there were some deadlines this year, and Marty Walsh is just saying what a lot of fans have felt for a long time. And feeling that frustration of not getting updates from the Coyotes. Because as far as ownership of the Coyotes are concerned, they don't owe any explanation to the NHLPA. They don't have to talk to the NHLPA. Bettman, on the other hand, uh, you can't ghost the guy who's running the league, uh, especially when it's it's something as dire as this potentially could be. But there you go. Uh, I just I wanted to do a video on this today. I wanted to give it some more time than just you know throwing it into a news video and just a brief little update. 
it it feels like there's wheels in motion. I think the the Coyotes owners want to keep the team. They want to stay in Arizona, but I, I I do think that they're they're running out of time. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event that you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support, and what's your prediction? The 2024-2025 season, are they still the Coyotes, or do they move to Utah, or? Uh, do you see new owners? What's your prediction? Let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.